Before I, I impose uh, the sentence in this case, I, I want to thank the family members uh, for the privilege of learning about each and every one of your loved ones. I can tell you that they will not be forgotten. And I feel that I know each and every one of them by the personal stories that you have um, that you have given. Um, by way of example, Mr. Beagle, I, I remember as the witty teacher with the dry sense of humor, um, Luke Hoyer as the, the unexpected baby that came but was so welcomed by his mom and dad. And these are just two that I'm remembering off the top of my head. You all have been so strong and patient and graceful throughout this process. And I, I can't help but think of if, how I would behave or respond if I, if I were in your shoes. The way that you have grieved so gracefully and have shown extraordinary restraint throughout this process is something that I've never seen. And as a group of people, you are so strong and, and so united that if anything good came out of this event, I feel seeing you, I, I can know that you are all going to be okay because you have each other. I know that that doesn't help at all. And if I could take your pain away or carry your pain for you just for five minutes so that you could breathe, <clears throat> I would. Because I, I can't even imagine what you go through each day. You are a wonderful, strong community. And I also want to tell you that when I visited that school, I expected um, tragedy and sadness, which is present. However, that school is still thriving and it's a beautiful campus and it's not broken like one would expect. And I think that that is due to the strength of you all and your community. And I think that when people remember that school, they're going to remember the strength of the community and how, I mean, every one of these kids came up here, the, the survivors and testified as to the schools that they're attending and how well they're doing. It, it, it speaks volumes as it, to you all as families and the care and the love that you, you provide your children. And I couldn't help but notice when their survivors came in and testified that their family units came with them and were there for them. And I can't think of any other instance in one community where, where so many children would have not one, not two, but a group of loving family members to support them. And that's how I will always think of MSD just as a, as a great school that will survive, like you all have. So many of you thanked me. I want to thank you because you were. You were, you were ordered so that we could have a fair and, and clean trial. You were ordered not to to have emotional reactions, to, to show restraint that I don't believe. I think I would be like Mr. Oliver and I would have to be in my office because I don't believe I would be able to show the restraint that you all showed. And I thank you for that.
pronounce the sentence of the court as follows. Count one of the indictment, the murder in the first degree of Luke Hoyer, the court imposes a sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. Count two of the indictment, the murder in the first degree of Martin Duque and Quiano, the court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count three of the indictment, the murder in the first degree of Gina Montalto, the court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count four of the indictment, the murder in the first degree of Alexander Schachter, the court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count five of the indictment, the murder in the first degree of Elena Petty, the court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count six of the indictment for the murder in the first degree of Alyssa Al-Hadef, the court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. To count seven of the indictment for the murder in the first degree of Nicholas Dwarette, the court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count eight for the murder in the first degree of Helena Ramsey, the court imposes a life sentence, mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count nine for the murder in the first degree of Christopher Hickson, the court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count 10 for the murder in the first degree of Carmen Shentrup. The court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count 11 for the murder in the first degree of Aaron Feist. The court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count 12 for the murder in the first degree of Scott Beagle. The court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count 13, the murder in the first degree of Meadow Pollock. The court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count 14, for the murder in the first degree of Kara Lofren. The court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count 15 for the murder in the first degree of Joaquin Oliver. The court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count 16 for the murder in the first degree of Jamie Gutenberg. The court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count 17 for the murder in the first degree of Peter Wang. The court imposes a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Count 18 for the attempted murder in the first degree of Ashley Baez. The court imposes a life sentence with a minimum mandatory, Mr. Silverstein, it's 25 to life? Yeah, or do I? So you have, we're, asking. we're asking for life, Your Honor. With a mandatory life sentence under Florida 1020 life statute. <clears throat> Count 19, with the attempted murder, for the attempted murder of William Olson, the court imposes a life sentence 
with a 20-year minimum mandatory sentence under Florida's 1020 life statute. Count 20, for the attempted murder in the first degree of Kashava Magnapuram, the court imposes a life sentence with a mandatory life sentence under Florida's 1020 life statute. Count 21, for the attempted murder of the, in the first degree of Justin Colton, the court imposes a life sentence with a 20-year minimum mandatory prison sentence under Florida's 1020 life statute. Count 22, for the attempted murder in the first degree of Alexander Dorett, the court imposes a life sentence with a 20-year minimum mandatory prison sentence under Florida's 1020 life statute. Count 23, the attempted murder in the first degree of Genesis Valentin, the court imposes a life sentence with a 20-year minimum mandatory prison sentence under Florida's 1020 life statute. Count 24, for the attempted murder in the first degree of Daniela Meniscal, the court imposes a life sentence with a 20-year minimum mandatory prison sentence under Florida's 1020 life statute. Count 25, for the attempted murder in the first degree of Samantha Grady, the court imposes a life sentence with a minimum mandatory of 20 years Florida State Prison under Florida's 1020 life statute. Count 26, for the attempted murder, Mr. Silvershine, I see you're standing up, did I? Just in case. Miss Beak, okay. <laughs> Count 26, for the attempted murder in the first degree of Samantha Fuentes. I'm imposing a life sentence with a minimum mandatory of life under ten, Florida's 1020 life statute. Count 27, for the attempted murder in the first degree of Isabel Checker. The court imposes a life sentence with a minimum mandatory prison sentence of 20 years Florida State Prison under Florida's 1020 life statute. Count 28, for the attempted murder in the first degree of Samantha Mayor, the court imposes a life sentence with a life minimum mandatory prison sentence under Florida 1020 life statute. Count 29, for the attempted murder in the first degree of Benjamin Wickender, the court imposes a life sentence with a minimum mandatory of life in prison under Florida's 1020 life statute. Count 30, for the attempted murder in the first degree of Madeline Wilford, the court imposes a life sentence with a minimum mandatory of 20 years Florida State Prison under Florida's 1020 life statute. Count 31, for the attempted murder in the first degree of Marion Kabachenko, the court imposes a life sentence with a 20 year minimum mandatory sentence under Florida's 1020 life statute. Count 32, for the attempted murder in the first degree of Stacy LaPelle, the court imposes a life sentence with a 20 year minimum mandatory prison sentence under Florida's 1020 life statute. Count 33, for the attempted murder of Anthony Borges. The court imposes a life sentence with a mandatory life sentence under Florida's 10, 1020 life statute. Count 34, for the attempted murder in the first degree of Kyle Lamon. The court imposes a life sentence with a minimum mandatory of life in prison under Florida's 1020 life statute. I am ordering that each and every count of the indictment run consecutive to one another. Your Honor, Your Honor on, count on count 30, yeah, on count 30, uh, that is a 25 to life, not 20 years. Madeline Wolfer. Well, Madeline Wolfer. Okay, excuse me. I misspoke. On count 30, there is alleged and proven the use of a firearm 
discharge and infliction of great bodily harm on Madeline Wilford. So I am correcting my previously imposed sentence. It is a life sentence with a mandatory life sentence under Florida's 1020 life statute. Again, I am ordering that all 34 counts of the indictment for each sentence is to run consecutive. That is one after another. I'm ordering all mandatory court costs, all costs of prosecution. I'm ordering the costs of incarceration uh, of the defendant by the Broward Sheriff's Office. I'm also imposing a public defender fee uh, pursuant to Florida statute. I'm ordering restitution for each victim as previously named in counts one through 34 of the indictment with the specific amount to be determined at a later time. I am ordering pursuant to 943-325, the defendant is to submit to two samples of his blood or less intrusive method for purposes of the DNA bank. Mr. Cruz, you are remanded to the custody of the Department of Corrections to complete the mandatory life sentences imposed by the court. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court. If you fail to appeal within the allotted time period, or you fail to contest the imposition of any of the fees or costs imposed. During that 30 day period, you will waive said appeal. I am also granting the state's motion under the Florida equivalent of the Son of Sam law, which means Mr. Cruz, you will not be able to benefit, benefit in any way as far as monies are concerned as to the crime that you, the crimes that you committed. In addition, I am going to order the Department of Corrections to garnish uh, the commissary account of Mr. Cruz until all restitution and costs of prosecution and costs of the Sheriff's Office are paid in full. Uh, the Department of Corrections, I don't know where you're going, but they can assign that duty to their local um, office where they will uh, charge an applicable fee and garnish your commissary until all of these amounts that I have previously ordered are paid in full, specifically uh, the costs of the sheriff, the state, and any restitution that is ordered. Is there anything else from either side? Not from the state, Your Honor. Is there anything from the defense? It was previously waived. Then there was some discussion about whether it could be in a death penalty case, but um, the defense is maintaining their waiver of a PSI. Mr. Cruz, you're still under oath. Are you in agreement that you're not asking for a PSI in this case? Okay. Is there anything else? Waiver. All right. He's remanded to the custody of the Department of Corrections. And he's to be given credit in the amount of 1,718 days time served. <laughs> 